Uh, we'll see how we manage it. No okay. Yeah. So, sir, we'll be uh, starting your presentation uh, in a moment. Are you ready for? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, wonderful. Uh, we'll start recording and then we'll st we'll start the program. Dr. Morita, I'm just trying to make it. Yes, Dr. Sharma, uh, you're slightly audible, not clearly. So I would request everybody to mute uh, your mics, please. We are going to start the program. So, good morning and uh, welcome to today's session on innovation for smart habitat. As you know, the NCID is organizing a weekly one-hour Facebook Live and YouTube Live session on innovation, entrepreneurship, and startup for IGNU students and faculty, covering different topics of common interest. The program aims at encouraging and motivating IGNU students towards innovation, entrepreneurship, and startup. The 39th session in this series titled Innovation for Smart Habitat is being organized today. Today, you are well aware that there is an impetus by the government of India to develop smart city cities across the country. The Indian cabinet approved 98,000 crore rupees for the development of 100 smart cities and the rejuvenation of 500 others. The Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs has launched the Smart Cities mission, which is working towards these objectives. The Smart Cities mission has created the Smart Cities Promoting Innovation, Research and Incubation in Technology by partnering with the schemes of Atal Innovation Mission and Startup India Scheme. It has thus created an ecosystem for fostering innovations in smart cities. So what is a smart city and what kind of innovations are needed in it? Some researchers define smart city as a city where citizens, objects, utilities, etc., connect in a seamless manner using ubiquitous technologies so as to significantly enhance the living experience in the 21st century urban environments. Other experts define smart city as a city combining ICT and web to Point o technology with other organizational design and planning efforts to dematerialize and speed up bureaucratic processes and to help to identify new innovative solutions to city management complexity in order to improve sustainability and livability. So at the core of this concept is the human habitat and the component of innovation to introduce smart or intelligent living conditions for better efficiency. Indeed, the scope of innovation in this area is enormous and I'm sure many of our students are working on the ideas on how to develop innovative solutions for smart cities or smart houses. In fact, one of our students, Mr. Kunal Ambasht, has demonstrated his innovation Kia AI recently in this very area. So to discuss more on this topic in detail, today we have with us Professor Sevaram and it is my pleasure to introduce him to you. Dr. Sevaram is professor and head in the Department of Transport Planning, School of Planning and Architecture, Delhi. He obtained his degree in BTEC in Civil Engineering from IIT Delhi and M Planning in Transport and PhD from School of Planning and Architecture, Delhi. He has an experience of more than 27 years in this field. As transportation engineer in the city and industrial development Corporation Navi Mumbai, he contributed to the planning and design of the then new city. Dr. Ram's area, areas of interest include traffic and transport engineering, transport design, transport infrastructure, planning and design of sustainable transport system, transport technology, mobility solutions, and universal accessibility, transport environment relation, and safety. He has been actively involved in the formulation of several Indian Road Congress codes or guidelines and has several international and national publications and presentations. He was a member of the International Draft Committee of 
formulation of combined resolution of United Nations Center for Regional Development. He has also been involved in several committees of the Ministry of Urban Development of the Government of India. And among them, he has been a member of the technical core group of TCPO on the formulation of Urban Regional Development Plan Guidelines. Dr. Ram is a key member of Indo Highway Capacity Manual. Today, he will be sharing his thoughts and experiences on innovation or smart habitat with us. I welcome you, Professor Ram, to today's session. We also have with us Dr. Om Prakash Sharma, Director NCIDE. Be before I invite Professor Ram, I would request Dr. Sharma to say a few words, please. Dr. Sharma. Thank you, Dr. Momita. Good morning to all. And I welcome Professor Sevaramji for this uh, session on startup and innovation entrepreneurship in the university. We are really thankful to you for sparing time and address our students on a very important topic on innovations in the field of smart cities and habitat. In fact, for the last few years, we have all seen that how these cities are changing, what kind of smartness and the innovations are taking place. And uh, in almost all these activities, we know that the students of different organizations, they are taking part, they are doing some innovative things. And their innovations are now being used in the, uh, these cities to, to make them smart, to make them uh, uh, eco-friendly, to make them um, uh, people-friendly, different kind of problems which society is facing. Those are being addressed by this. And then a uh, uh, number of innovations are taking place in, in these areas. What are those innovations and what kind of uh, uh, more such initiatives are required? I think that will help our students also to understand uh, the, the new possibilities for innovation, not only, uh, not only in the field of habitat, but I think in all aspects, because uh, uh, in different fields, maybe in the environment, maybe the health, maybe the transport system, maybe the waste management, whatever is, because when we talk about the smart city, I think all these uh, these aspects have to have to be considered together collectively. Uh, only then we can think of having a smart city. The possibilities of innovation and also what kind of innovations are taking place, and hopefully it will help our students in uh, taking some initiatives in this direction. Because I would like to uh, share with you that IGNO students are doing wonderful thing because they are either working at their own uh, in uh, in their workplace or somewhere and taking understanding the problems of the society problems of the people and accordingly they are taking initiatives they are doing innovations only the thing is slightly <clears throat> what more is required in this context so i think in uh, in that regard your deliberation today will help them in uh, understanding what kind of all possibilities are there, how they can help, and uh, this program is being uh, uh, is being live uh, cast on um, YouTube as well as Facebook. So many students uh, will be joining us through Facebook and YouTube. Uh, some of these students are there with us um, in this Google Meet also. Our faculty member are there, so they will be interacting with you and would like to clarify many things. Would like to understand the things what all is possible. So with that, I once again welcome you and thank you very much for sparing time and addressing our students. So <clears throat> without taking much time, I think uh, Dr. Mamita, we can invite Professor Sevaramji to deliver his uh, address. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. Now I invite today's expert, Professor Sevaramji, to deliver his talk on the topic, Innovation for Smart Habitat. Professor Ram, please. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mamita ji. Uh, Dr. Opi Sharmaji, I am thankful to IGNO and uh, that is uh, for giving opportunity to talk to larger fraternity and that too from large number of fields, which uh, truly reflects the character of a new education policy, which at times we are confused whether to call multidisciplinary or to call interdisciplinary. Uh, that itself could be a point of discussion, but there cannot be a better, uh, I would say, university or better platform than IGNO, 
which has so many departments and uh, interlinking of the ideas from one department to another that is very important there was a time when uh, smart city was either considered as uh, the domain of it experts then we started understanding the it expert can only translate the ideas the informations into the technology but where will the ideas will come what are the user preferences we certainly we wanted to have the consultation with user group who will understand who will indirectly convey what are the choices in terms of the smart habitat since the idea was to be translated in terms of the physical design so came the design experts whether it's a planner architect or engineers etc so the idea that we generated that the smart city cannot be conceived by it expert alone but a combination of large number of experts together then only we will be having true character of the smart city if you talk about smart city or smart habitat i'm using the word habitat because this word can be enlarged or this word can be shortened it goes right from smart shelter from a smart house to the concept of smart neighborhood where well you call community then it goes to the upper hierarchy in terms of the urban area we can have the district centers we can have central business district district in terms of the rural hierarchy it goes to village taluka district etc and then finally gets into the regional aspect etc so if that be the concept of the the smart habitat and then we are integrating it then that is really the character of the smart habitat that we discuss uh in no certain order i will be using my presentations and allow me to shift the presentations because of uh, the technical problem at my end in the computer i could not uh, separate this so i will stand uh, corrected if there are any issues for you to refer to my presentations part etc please so i i will uh, just make a check please uh, is my slide visible to you hello clear yeah. yes yes sir okay okay at any point of time the slide is not visible i kept my phone aside uh, i will be informed and i will listen to that so friends uh, we discussed uh, in uh, as i told you in no certain order that is why yeah, it's not like so uh, we discussed uh, as to uh, we start with this uh, concept of the smart cities certainly we have to link with sdg goals i hope you know rather sdg which is called sustainable development goals and any one of the sustainable development goals you pick up indirectly you will have the reflection of a smart habitat whether you talk of poverty that goal number 1 or you talk of two or you talk of three anything that you can talk about will definitely get linked to the smart habitat so our objective is to see how we achieve these smart goals yes this is again a reflection on the smart uh, that is uh, cities and basically the sustainable development goals uh, there comes the concept of the green building that is this or green building or this comes a concept of smart habitat actually whether you call green building or you can call a smart habitat the habitat doesn't mean it's uh, should be a place only for living it is also a place for living uh, carrying out your daily activities so that means that it will also have residential commercial industrial and other kind of activities will also be a part of that 
it's an example of uh, how uh, the, the so-called uh, the green building will look like where you are the idea is that you do not uh, you, you should, should have a zero budget housing what it means that you do not actually the net output which goes to the environment should be zero you do not uh, do any negative in a way if we understand from economics point of view commercial point of view there is a credit and there is a debit so you can say that whatever we takes uh, back from uh, the environment we have to give back to the environment i am not saying that we take good air we throw the bad air that is not an example so in a way we need to conserve the environment and uh, if that we so then you have to conserve the energy I and mean, if you have to conserve the energy because it's the energy which gets transformed finally into the environment so your uh, the concept of the housing in fact somebody says uh, are we not going back to our old civilization yes in in a way yes in a way yes there was no concept of the mud housing so we started having it now because we thought that we will have the environment friendly way of constructing the housing there was no but what we do it now here in, in a modified manner in a way that improves the quality of life etc somebody wanted to ask me sir don't you think we were better earlier when uh, we were walking it our mode of transport was uh, the walk and uh, yes yes true that was sustainable but that was also in a way having the dimensions of economic growth you could hardly travel to a distance of uh, two kilometer five kilometer if you wanted to travel longer you had to walk for days and months and years together so development always brings some dimensions of challenges to the environment and so came so if you want development you are bound to have these kind of things but in a way so came the concept of this uh, energy uh, friendly or you can call green housing and these are uh, i will be thing i can stick on what i would like to show you more into the visual forms that we better this is a uh, sustainable uh, of the grid house how will it look like where it has every information it has energy efficient heating systems it has uh, the concept of the geothermal energy it has on site the food production etc and the other aspect which we are saying it here solar panels in a way you are able to generate your own energy whether it's a uh, uh, question of conserving the water so you need to have the rain water uh, collection system and you do not want the waste water to be just uh, uh, flowing through the our sewage and sewage systems that is so you need to have that treatment and you make it use so if that is the complete uh, presentations of a, a house which will be self sufficient then there are uh, multiple dimensions of uh, the, that uh, you have a uh, sustainable habitat yes So uh, came the concept of uh, there is some issue here that is you talk of green buildings you talk of green grids you talk of green ICTs and you talk of green transportations and of course the green industries etc. So come the concept of green technology. I don't think we need to talk about uh, there cannot be a, a better uh, compilations than Igno which has uh, taken compilation through the best resource person in the best man possible manners. So already you have in your booklet, etc. How what are the ideas of the green technology? Whether it's a plastic recycling or you talk about. Honorable Prime Minister recently mentions in his, uh, you know, a visit uh, to to, to uh, you know outside uh, in the different countries. Then he was referring to how the India has, uh, in a way, 
uh, saved so much uh, energy and so much pollutions by using LED itself. So that was the word mentioned by him only. So that is indirectly leading to the green concept. Yes, we need to have the self-sustain and that there comes, as I told you, the efficient use of soil and landscaping. Our, that is a, again a smart habitat. When I say the smart habitat, uh, the idea is that every inch of the land, you have to designate the use. Any uh, use, even if you say, no, we cannot use. I mean, do not mean to say that every inch of land you have to construct a house. No, that is not the way. You construct a house, but you look at what are the other requirements. You need an open space. You need the lungs, whether it's a city or the village, etc. So, but you cannot leave any uh, abandoned uh, places, etc. You have to designate, even if it's an open space, even if it's a water pond, even if it is something like this. So, you have to go into that. So, there is an efficient use of soil spaces, etc. And so came the concept of the energy efficient, eco-friendly, etc. And uh, recently, uh, I hope you know that yesterday itself, uh, there was a mention about indoor air quality. We have been all the time talking about ambient air quality. Indoor air quality is a question mark. Our last number of health uh, 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 challenges are coming from indoor air quality. NGT has given that. And one of our students have done the PhD in the same field only. So there comes the questions of the benefits of the green building. I don't think we it's, look at it. It has a lot of social benefits, okay? And it, it has economic benefits also, where you can actually have, the, the, certainly you will have reduced maintenance costs, etc. highest occupancy will be there. And uh, there will be a climate uh, change, of course, that is uh, creating problem to us. That will also be addressed. What are the material that you can use it here? Yes, the material should have all these aspects that is reflected. And this is how a green building look like. Should not be misunderstood. Green building doesn't mean it should look green. That is a, this is a widely used now. You find out that there are large number of advertisements. There are large number of stories about how the different spaces, incidental spaces, uh, nobody earlier was using the rooftop area, but now they are getting converted into these uh, forms, etc. Nobody was having the ideas of the photovoltaic uh, that is uh, BIPV. It has come very well. I am sure that we are going to have an independent solar village where uh, you do not need any other uh, conventional methods of energy and that is what again this is how it will look like that is what led there has been large work done on activity no i don't know how many of you know that we have a electrochromic windows that is a very good concept in terms of uh, how you know the, the your the flow of this where the electrons and ion will take place so this in in a way go from transparent to op opaque those who are aware of the the applied physics or physics, they will be able to understand it better. So came the concept of structure, panel, etc. Now we have started using it. Uh, the large number of byproducts have been compressed and converted into a load bearing structure, etc. So in a way, there is a already innovations getting into that work, uh, which is talking about compact, etc. We are already using the plastic also in a, uh, this was already used in China and other countries also where the, the, the Plastics indirectly was used in a highly compacted and then it started, it was used in rails actually. And uh, that was one uh, direct use where you have a direct compact, etc. So there are large number of uses already coming up. Uh, this is how the green buildings in the urban areas look like. Yes, it is also known as the sustainable buildings, which use it in a way. What is the definition? Less water optimization of energy, natural resources generations of the less waste, etc. These are the concept of the energy. This is how uh, the model will look like for the green buildings, actually, where you have a rooftop right from photovoltaic and talk about this, uh, the side wall, etc., which takes care into the insulations and also takes into account the sun energy. Although it's a question mark. Now, somebody said that, don't you think we have started creating? I'm not at all saying that you need to create a glass window. That I'm not saying it here. I'm only saying it that you need to have every corner, every inch of space should be the part of the green building. There can be a large number of innovations in this. 
our students should be innovative to work green building, not in the urban area, because the urban area mostly looked after the planned architect or planner, but uh, they are not done. There is hardly any kind of work done in the villages and village habitat, etc. So this is where you can come across. And I, I somebody was asking me, what is the, the, the message that you will convey to, to the students and the faculty? I am sure the, the IGNU should create the, some kind of a uh, infrastructure, service infrastructure consultant some kind of a capacity building that will tell. So this is the idea which is coming from the green building, getting reflected directly and getting transferred from urban to the non-urban area. This is how this is, uh, the, uh, certainly you know that there will be a maximum utilization of natural ventilation. That is an important thing that you should do it here. It's a very simple, if you use the ventilations, your pollution itself is very, pollution is nothing but a concentration. Uh, somebody says, uh, so how do you reduce the pollution? I said, you understand the concept of a drop putting into the, uh, the bottle of water, bucket of water, pond of water, you will understand automatically. Either you increase the volume or increase the drop size the both way or any one of them will reduce the concentration and so is the case so if the ventilation is there it improves that that is the idea this is how a, a brownfield development actually you can look at before and after that's how it looked like so these are the features of sustainable this is again the green building that i'm showing you sustainable very important i think there are building rating systems in the urban area but we do not have these rating systems in the non-urban area this is where again innovations can come innovations for the faculty to develop these rating systems innovations for the service consultant in the urban area which can be trained by you no know, can be to uh, if somebody wants to upgrade it here this is we still using in the uh, certainly the cost is a factor but that can be done so this is how the green building rating systems come. What are the rating systems are there? I don't think I can educate in one class itself. But yes, there are green rating for integrated habitat systems. This is how it has changed actually over the period of times. And what are the different, Terry has got it. And there are a large number of uh, Greha, et cetera, have already got these systems. And there are 34 criteria which focus on site planning, building design, et cetera, et cetera. So finally, you come to that point. The idea is that once you talk about smart city, you talk about smart habitat, how to rate the smart habitat, you can rate based on this. That was the idea. Okay. This is how the green building rating systems in this is I GBC systems are there. There are different systems. Again, I will not discuss it here, but I've already made a word the last number, but certainly the most commonly used is the Greha systems that we are using it here. This is indoor environmental quality. That's again, I, I just not uh, mentioned this word to you. And uh, this will be, I think, another work or another innovation that can be used in the future to, to come. There are a large number of buildings. I don't know, you know, though I am Ahmedabad building, if you go inside, it is the one which actually is a good example of indoor air quality as well as the indoor environment. You don't need any kind of, you talk about ISC, India Habitat Centers, if you look at the large number of open space and how it has been covered, uh, that you get a sunlight, but without any uh, so-called radiations inside. So that, that is the concept that we are using it here. So friend, uh, how do you use this? Uh, there is a, this is another good example of the local power bank. I don't know how many of you know that uh, it's a very good concept of uh, the wiring that is a world trade centers. In a way, it has got turbines which are installed. Tree. They, they generate about 675 kilowatt. And then uh, what it happened, that is the turbines actually generate not only its own power. I hope you could see somewhere here that these the turbines are used. They are not only using uh, the, they are not only uh, manufacturing the power which is required for them, but also generating the excess power actually. That is, this is another examples of Abu Dhabi. That is what we have got it. Yes, they are good examples. And uh, this is also an example which is a geometric pattern that takes into account uh, the screen, which are about thousands mobile elements are there which contact and expand during the day, depending upon the sun position. So what is important that each one of us teaching the sun, but not understanding the sun path is changing. The radiation is also different. How do you tap the maximum? This is the new idea that you can develop even in the urban areas. As I told you, there are several solar, uh, I would say the energy consultant, which are coming urban rural area. Nobody is actually using except the, the public building, etc. that we are using it. This is an again, uh, uh, again, the concept that you are using it uh, in terms of 
closing sequence of the that is uh, the umbrella system that you can get it here. So this is again an example of Pearl River Tower. I don't know you know it or not. In China, a very good example which was uh, completed in 2011. So this building, if you can see it here, there are depressions on the outer surfaces which are designed actually. Uh, the wind moving into the building itself and this wind enters it is intercepted by a small wind turbine and thereby they are generating air what can be a better idea innovation than this uh, that is what uh, i don't think i can show it to you here my own buildings that i have a plot development in gurga so what i have done on the top I, I have used the principle of applied physics where i have used the bernoulli theorem so i have cut the section in such a way that i take in the front portion is a larger then I keep on reducing it here. If I go on the rooftop, because of the Bernoulli's principle that I get it from a smaller section to the larger section, automatically the artificial wind is blowing in that side. This is a small idea, doesn't? So this is innovation that you can develop and you can use it here. This is, again, energy storing hydrogen cell. That is an idea that you can actually discuss in terms of how, with the help of turbines, etc., you are generating. There is a... I am telling the world is going to use the hydrogen cells uh, in, a, in a big way in the time to come apart because the, our electric vehicle is still some of the energy experts are questioning that, that the big problem will be that after some time, how will you dispose these banded batteries? How will you recycle these batteries? So you might end up after some time, another energy, another, another environmental crisis. But the idea that I'm generating it here uh, in terms of solar, whether it will have a less energy. Hydrogen probably is the one that can be the one. I was also a part of the technology need assessment, which was indirectly uh, uh, was a uh, uh, which was uh, the part of the Paris declarations actually. So, and I was looking after the transportation aspect, and there we were discussing how even we have gone into the transportations from a small level, even to the satellite, even to the third world transportation that we have got. And there we talked about how you could save the energy and how could you save the environment here. So, so much so, that is an idea, that is the innovation that you can use it. If any time you have time, you can refer to TNA, that is technology need assessment. Of course, it talks about habitat, it talks about transportation, it talks about everything. And that was indirectly a guiding factor for the Paris declarations where we are signatory to uh, indirectly reductions and taking care of the, of the climate challenges. This is good example that I'm talking from India. You will say, sir, a bark example, you're showing the outer example, I'm showing this example. Yeah, very good example uh, from Pune. I don't know anybody from Pune here. You can see a very good example that you can have it here. A very good combinations of the building design along with the water bodies, etc. This is another example, good example of, of the, the Bangalore, which is the bio, biodiversity. This is a very good example that you can see it here. This is uh, Chennai that you can look at it here, Olympia Technology Park. I'm showing you the good design, which is, this is uh, ITC Green Centers, which are these that I've shown it to here, Ladakh. Yes, uh, I hope you know, this is a drug white lotus school. So these buildings have already uh, got the names, etc. We are yet to have a big names in the rural area that my thrust is going into that side. This is again, good pictures and good photograph that I'm showing it to you from different parts of this. So green building, uh, that is what economy, that is what. It is predictive. Please learn this word. That in buildings and appliances can reduce. Just look at it here. This much, uh, you know, CO2 itself, you can reduce it. Here. That means, uh, in a way, you will have a great contributions to the energy conservations and also the environmental, uh, I would say, the, the livable environment green building economy. I don't think I will discuss in details. This is, I already told you what are the benefits of the green buildings that is there. Energy savings, of course, that can be 20, 30%, the water saving. It's not just the energy, it is the water. And it is not the energy. I think we are getting confused. The energy, it's not, it is also the exhaust that you are creating. It is also uh, uh, the, 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 you are contributing to the environment. Negative contribution will reduce directly. As a result, Positive goes up, negative reduces. So overall benefit becomes huge. These are already the economic and the rent benefits. Uh, allow me to get into this. So what are these wastewater? What are the wastewater treatment? This is coming in a big way. And there has been large work done again in this area. But again, 
the work has been done uh, mainly in the uh, in, in the, the urban area. Chennai, we have already done it here. The master plan itself has for waste water management plans was formulated in fact 2008 itself. And uh, then these are the sequential changes that you have got it in the waste water management in Chennai itself that is there. So this is, uh, if you talk about that, uh, what was uh, done. Uh, in, uh, this is a good example of uh, Singapore. I don't know how many of you know it here. Uh, this Singapore is a very, very uh, good example to learn, a very good case study to learn how it has changed right from 1980s when there was issues, the public health and sanitation issues were there. And then they got the first sewage uh, schemes in Singapore. They got it. And then they started the conjecture behavior. This is a Singapore development plan, how it goes from wastewater, it goes to the discharge system, et cetera, and how the wastewater is collected and it is conveyed to the six water uh, tank, et cetera. This is uh, the, the so-called profile that you can get it here. A very good example, but the, somebody asked, sir, uh, don't you think you are teaching something? No, 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 I'm not teaching from internet at all. Please don't. It, you need to understand this. Sir, can you do it at a house level? We don't have so much space and you are giving example. No, I am not saying that is where the question comes. Something will be done at individual habitat, individual sector, and something will be done as a community, actually. Community. Sir, how can you make it a community? I can make it either by public participants, sir, nobody will come at. Then I will make it by the building bylaws and I will make it by regulations that... Uh, in a streets, etc., there will be a space which will be kept. And how can you do it here? There are a large number. Of, we had a good examples of very good example of how through the uh, the street system we could actually collect the water and charge it to an open space. So, and that was the wastewater treatment itself. So, this could be another innovations given to the student. They can actually learn from it here. This is how it can go. The small, small things that you can get it from here, uh, washing machines too, we are just wasting the water. Anybody says, the moment you say water, you understand. If somebody says, if I give you water in a small cane of 100 ml, then you will understand the importance of that water. Otherwise, you don't understand the importance of water. Okay? So this is how uh, there, there are a large number of this public building. It is to be must. The, this... I have seen in Gurgaon, I am sorry to speak that, uh, that Gurgaon and that uh, the, the authorities are also very active, very active to, uh, any, to stop any kind of bad practice. So what was this? That you will be given uh, uh, the occupancy certificate for buildings of more than a certain size, only when you have a groundwater charging system. What happened? The everybody just, whenever the occupation certificate was to be given, they just put a dummy borehole and then they happen to show, okay, we have got it here. But that is not the way. That is in a way you are fooling yourself and you are fooling. Everybody feels, oh, I don't think I, they, this will happen after 100 years. No, don't. If this community continues, this will not happen 100 years. It will happen only after 20 years, not 20 years, five years only. It will happen. So this is the way. You have community, you have a household, you have villages, etc. What are the responsibility? What are the technology that you can use it here? And what are the parameters which you can use it for the different uh, technology solutions? For example, at the household level, you are talking about this is you can talk about that we have given what are the parameters which are selecting for uh, the grey water management inventions. You can use it from household to community to village levels, etc. You can use it here. So this is how it goes for India. Then uh, talking about uh, buildings, talking about the energy, talking about the, 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 the infrastructure in terms of this, then their questions come, say, a transport. I happen to give one lecture in the IGNO and then I have shown them how we have gone right from uh, the civilizations when the, we were using these kind of transportation systems, left hand side was purely, purely non polluting this non-polluting, etc. We started getting, uh, you know, increment of the speeds and we got into the polluting. The cycle is going back. If you do more work on the non-motorized transport today, you will get a better price than doing the work in a motorized transport. So the, we are going back. But point to be noted, what is that? Here it was used even for traveling long distance. We don't say so. We say for your local transportations and affordable transportations, walkable transportations uh, by walk, Little more should be bicycles, etc., but in a safe manner. That is what. So this is uh, 
how the uh, a good transportation systems or sustainable transportation system will look like you don't have to take care only for the vehicle but also to take care of i don't somebody was asking it sir uh, you know uh, we have done research which was just published in the uh, one of the newspaper that we did a research on to develop uh, f4 for safe and secure systems in a way you give me the parameters and on the base parameters i will tell you whether it's a safe state or uh, unsafe state from security point of view whether the women or anybody is safe to travel on that there are different parameters that were used it here then one of the important parameter that came out the live states active states are always much safer as compared to the abandoned states so everybody said don't have anything on footpath true you should not have anything on the footpath i do agree we have to make our walkability improvement but at the same time you have to improve the activity sir then what do you do for the hawkers and vendors let hawkers and vendors etc should go into an organized place and that place is called as multi utility zone m u z multi utility zones i am not saying on footpath the idea is we do take care of this i could give an example of i happened to travel to us in uh, seattle and then i could see the streets and i could find any anything which was any commercial place was i found everyone was having a glass walls i did not understand what is the point i asked what is the point then i realized oh what is the glass walls are doing it here they are creating the visibility and thereby they are creating the sense of security and that's why you are whether inside or outside and thereby your streets become safe also but they do have so it takes into account non motorized transport lane in india has become no man's lane in fact that is the problem there are encroachments by a higher category the footpath is encroached by two wheelers and two wheeler and encroached by anybody and truck encroaches everybody that is what but that is not the way we want it here yes i did have a presentation the other day in uh, africa only in uh, that was in uh, addis ababa and i was having some slide that i'm showing it to you is it a unique problem in india we don't have this is a problem equally rather it is more in in the african countries also look at the ways that is what they do have in india also we do have uh, the problems uh, of these kind of rural transportations now of course you have a question that in rural areas also we start having electric vehicle so that become a question mark look at the way how the transportation systems in kenya uh, that is being uh, taken care of do you understand what i am writing it here bicycle is a trans public transport system there bicycle is a public transport system what it does the man is driving the other man is sitting on the back side so that is the conditions we have got it here this is the non man transport that means as the size of this will keep on increasing it here what happened your size of what accessibility everybody is talking about smart but we are forgetting that we need of all the age groups are to be must if you know accessibility is made from the two word access plus ability so these are the this is how a street will look like that is what my objective is to tell you smart habitat habitat only doesn't mean only the building you need to move out i need to have a space so we need to have these kind of street which is a active street but not encroaching on each other i don't know how many of you know that there is a requirement the legal requirement of providing a minimum width of footpath that is a clear width of footpath as 1.8 meter you do not have 1.8 meter footpath total and if you have the tree will come in between the pole will come in between and if you are walking on the footpath you will be save arm and tomorrow the class will not be held because save arm will be drowned in the some kind of his the open you know you will have a, there are the, the, in india or otherwise the, our footpath was uh, designed incidentally accidentally how there was a drain system we wanted to cover the drain system or we said okay let's go with the footpath probably that was the first smartness that we developed it here but that is not the that that is smartness in a bad way taking the light making this person to finally walk on the carriage way because he, he will like continuity he will like uh, consistency he will like that is not available what will happen he will walk on the carriage what will happen life will be at risk tomorrow you will find there is an accident so this is how the curb height is a question mark nobody even knows that you small small things matters we have a curb height something like that you can have a high jump the rules say that don't have it more than 10 to 15 cm if that is so the person will not use it here that is what 
And this is how a good example that I'm showing it to you, how the uh, space looked like. Can you look at on the right hand side and the left hand side? There are poles, but leaving the poles aside, there are, and the space is constrained. Then the vehicular space is constrained. So very good example of Bhagavad Gita, which you could, I could have a, another presentation so on only on talking about smart transportation, but my topic was not on transportation, was also a part of that. So I just have happened to show it to you. This is how the good transportation system, the, our, uh, that system that we are talking about, the walk system, etc. we don't have signage system. If I try to show you, it is like this. The corners are blocked. If you are coming from other side, you don't know whether you'll be there tomorrow or not. Very difficult. So this is how we do have a streets which is occupied by both the sides. And somebody says, I found that no accidents are happening. Yes, accidents are not happening because uh, you are encroaching the space but in a way, the speed getting reduced. That is why the accident is not happening. But in the OP time, the accidents are happening. So don't be happy to say that this is how we are designing something to block the visibilities. That is what we do have any statues converted in the outside. That is a bad example of design. I show you a very good example on the right hand side, which I've taken it from other countries where they understand mathematics very well. Diagonal is always the least distance for travel by the pedestrians. If you want to travel, you have to travel diagonally. And in our case, we don't use it. Somebody says, sir, how diagonal will be possible? Then we made them understand and we use this technique. We did not have a diagonal marking, but we did have this technique in uh, ITO intersection. We said that you have a smart, I'm talking about smart habitat means I'm talking about smart system. What system? Let's have all red phase. All red phase means what? All the vehicle come to stop. And when all the vehicle come to stop, the pedestrian will walk the distance. Otherwise, what happened? The pedestrian start walking. He will go to the median. Then another vehicle will moving. He will go to the other side. By the time he goes, you Monday you start, Tuesday will definitely reach. That should not be the conditions. If that be so, it will create unsafe conditions. That is, we do have, a, this is a good example of so protected movement of the pedestrians, etc. as you can have. And that's what I told you. Take Look at the right hand side picture that you can have very beautiful space is a walkable no ups and downs that you can have it. You can have these spaces, etc. And this is what uh, our spaces look like. Habitat design also means that you have to design these spaces, which otherwise encourages. I always say that the design is an active method of creating the smartness. If you say uh, don't drink water, okay, or drink water. Okay, I will drink or not drink, it will depend upon me. You keep a bottle of water in front of me, sometime I will get tempted. So in a way, what the bottle has done, an active method. So what we need, active method of smartness, that is what. These are the spaces that we are showing about that. How are you violating the principle of universal accessibility? You can look at it here. I, this is how the India, what's happening. You can look at this, uh, finally, this uh, lady is jumping. Whether it's jumping by default or you already blocked the way, should you have blocked the way? You need to understand the desire, etc. In a way, sometimes you always uh, block. The, yes, this is, um, I do did have a video, but unfortunately it is not working. If it was working, I could have shown it to you. This is a very good video. I do have in my another presentation, but I think I don't have the time. Otherwise, I could have shown you the video and you could have seen how the persons are walking. If the persons are walking, then you should have divided. The suggested method is the one that I'm dividing. We don't take care of this. This is the space which was designed at the time of the Commonwealth. It provided at least the safe design and the design, etc. This is how the pedestrians are crossing it here. It is also a part of smartness. It is also a part of this. Everywhere, what are you doing it here? You are constructing either the foot or bridge or you are constructing the 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 so-called uh, subways. Foot over bridge, somebody said they are not using it. Why are they not using, sir? There's a principle of energy consumption. So there's a principle of energy consumption. Who will go up and down? Chodo, sir, let us walk, actually. That is a... So this is how I am showing it to you that uh, that was the foot over bridge. So came the concept, let's have the subways. These subways, which I'm talking about, are the worst to happen and worst to... Uh, experience. You get into the subway, I don't think you will come out. There are houses of criminal activity. The idea that we need to say, should the subway not be designed? Why not? You design subway, but in a way that creates the sense of security. You have a smart design. What smart design will be there? I will say what I mean. 
tell you that. What is this? You can have a design like this. What are the designs? You allow the pedestrian to walk it at the zero level and let the vehicle go at a plus level. There will be no energy consumption principle. There will be no principle of insecurity feeling. That is the smart habitat design. Okay. You have a space like this. It creates a visibility block. Don't have it. Have a space slightly wider. It creates a sense of visibility. Still don't have it. Have the spaces like this so that I can see it across it here. I give beautiful examples of some of the spaces uh, uh, in, in Delhi itself. So what it says that as the width of the road increases, actually, if you have a small width, there is no need to provide a subway. Let you provide a surface crossing. Surface crossing is the first one to accept. The smartness should be uh, what that's what I gave an example. Our research, our practice, our innovation should be interdisciplinary. If you know the psychology, you should get transform, you transform into the design aspect. Psychology is what? If the smaller the width, the person will never use subway or foot or bridge. They will actually take the risk and cross it on the surface. Then why not to have a control crossing facilities on the surface on a smaller road width? If you have a larger road width, then also it becomes insecure. The person
PDT. So these are the parameters we got it here. And this is a very good example of community participation of Fajilka. Those who are aware, I don't know, there is a, the concept of daily risk, uh, rickshaw services with a call center, a new design of rickshaw now being replicated in many parts of the Punjab now. This is how it came. And I don't know, you know it or not, quality of eco cab. This is a good example of, we can see a beautiful example of Bogota, a large spaces. That's how the space is designed. Actually, when you look at this space, you love to walk, you love to go by the public transport because you will go. Here, the problem is that you go to the public transport only to make sure that your life is insured or not. That is where, because the first and last mile connectivities are as a question mark. Yes, these are the questions that I got it. How do you design the bus stop? Skywalk is like everybody started making the skywalk, but I have a very beautiful example of Japan. I don't know how many of you know it or not. Japan works on the principle. I will take only another uh, few minutes. That's all. I take another example of a uh, good example of Japan. You type the word Nagoya, N-A-G-O-Y. I happen to go to that city. They have used psychological methods of the designs. That is well. And they understood that if you're designing a skywalk, you need the facilities for a walk, that means, and you also need the facilities for, for the traveler system, similar to what we have got in our T3 or the airport, actually. You can either go use the traveler or you can go inside. You need both the systems like this. We don't need the systems like this, where you are writing it up and hence nobody writes it up. So you are wasting the money for, why? Because it is a smart for wasting the money but not from the smart that means a psychological use a psychological habits uh, is, a, is a question mark that you need to yes we need a space like this uh, this is what we have got beautiful spaces if you concept like this this is how the cyber hub look like i did a presentation on the connected vehicle actually how the connected vehicle the new concept has come this is talking about the smartness how the vehicle to vehicle connectivity i did a lecture uh, it should be with the uh, uh, ignore only so that uh, how to connect it vehicle this is how the connection goes and the connection goes very important thing do you know even the pedestrian i myself designed uh, uh, facilities for visually challenged pedestrian crossing for visually challenged and if you design like this the information goes the very important thing what it does this person is moving the information goes to the tower from the intelligent system it gets converted into a, a lcd display which indirectly tells the pedestrian is crossing it here so the this is how you can actually uh, use adoptive traffic signals are nothing but uh, intelligent traffic signal that you can use it here these are very good examples of so, uh, smart mobility a solution that you have got it here so friend uh, this is a good example that i talked to you. these are connected vehicles every day we are losing the life uh, because the persons uh, now in this case if you have this connected vehicles your headway get reduced the headway the moment your headway get reduced that this systems will already get reflected. Uh, I always gave that anybody say there was a mobile earlier. Then we came with smart mobile. What smart mobile? The other day I wanted to go to Tripati, so I typed Tripati. Now for the last 10 days, I am getting every message waiting to Tripati, Tripati Hotel, Darshan, everything I'm getting it here. That is a smart, is understood. Same thing is the smart system that will be coming into the vehicle. It will automatically alarm you that the one vehicle front and the back side is at chances of accident will get reduced. And not only this, this can be used even for the information for, I'm already guiding the research on artificial intelligence for parking and demand and supply. So what it does, not only it will inform the, the users where the parking uh, demand, uh, where the parking supply is available, it will also ensure the efficiency increment of the parking. So this is called smart solutions, okay. So anyway, I will have to do this, uh, wind up, otherwise I'll be, uh, this is the smartphone connectivity. We are already using the phone has become not like a tools now. I, I will told you that 2070, I will not be here. Young generation will be there, but there is a huge growth is going to be there. Automated vehicle and connected vehicle. This is what the automated vehicle is there. You will not need anybody, uh, but the vehicle will automatically take all the decision. This is how everything is fitted into this. This video is not working. Uh, I also don't have the time. Yes, this is a concept of solar energy. I'm sure the lot of work is already being done. There's a very good compilation. I myself have seen the work of Igno you know, on terms of the solar and that is your call of solar. But what needs here to be done that on the base area, we need to have economics. Economics also need to be 
as an important factor, what is that break even that you get it here in terms of the capital cost and investment cost, etc. Now, what is happening? Sevaram is the rich person, probably he can afford to put a solar panel and probably he will save in energy. Fine, that is okay. I will save my this, but I will also save the environment. But the idea is that uh, that's, wherever it is not possible, I ask you to convert into the community levels. We already have the solar farming. Uh, I had a good example of a city called uh, Patan in Gujarat. I don't know how many of you are aware of that city uh, or the space that uh, the soil is actually is totally infertile. And I happened to go there and then I was told there's a solar farm on that side. So the wasteland has been converted into solar farming. There was a large amount of work done being done in um, Madhya Pradesh in terms of the solar, etc. I think uh, I wanted to ask, I wanted to sensitize our friends, our colleagues from IGNO that please, please encourage the multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary. As I question, one of you, some of you do not even know what is the interdisciplinary actually. I do have a presentation. The other day I had a presentation in Central University of Rajasthan uh, or to talk about what are the research methods and where are the new areas that you can work. So a few of the slides that I've taken it here, how the interdisciplinary can be defined here uh, that is a, addressing a topic or solving a complex problem, which is uh, which is indirectly adequately by a single discipline. It becomes very difficult. You need, but as I told you, if you ask me to define what is interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, I will only show you from the photograph. This will explain you very beautifully. These are uh, a. If we talk about uh, this is a b. This is multidisciplinary. There's a department of uh, uh, you know botany. There's a department of geology. There's a department of anthropology. This is multidisciplinary. But interdisciplinary is a very simple. That is insights into a common problems that you want to connect it here. And there can be large number of things. If you really want to do agriculture, farming, etc., you should involve the economics, etc. If you want to do anything to do the smarts, etc., you should definitely involve the IT, uh, IT, uh, IT experts, psychology is to be involved, economics are to be involved, then only you will arrive. This is how the factors which is the outcoming uh, of uh, affecting the outcome of the, the interdisciplinary learning, you can talk about that is a interdisciplinary process and finally it converts into a product actually this is how it's classified low to medium and this is a good example that i have shown the references also how the alcohol etc so uh, indirectly is creating the aggression so somebody is looking at it from the psychologist point of view sociologist point of view and this is how you arrive at this is another very good example of understanding uh, what are the integrations level of integration this is multidisciplinary yes it is interdisciplinary where you got and there is another which is called as integrated. So I, this is a good example of, uh, again, the smart uh, uh, system that you're talking about, the vehicle monitoring systems. Yes, uh, Professor, I'm just winding it up. I could. This is a traffic monitoring uh, that now we are using it already. Uh, already in Gurgaon, we have started, uh, that is an adoptive traffic signal where the information will go, the queue length will go, etc. This is how. The safety is a very good uh, this is a questions mark. That is how it is to be addressed. I can give you, uh, somebody asked me, this is a, uh, uh, you know, a display of the signboard like this, which is a deceptive. He says uh, in Hindi, blind turn ahead. So actually the blind turn has already started. Why are you informing? You should inform me at a distance 150 meter before. And you put up a sign like this where the person is thoroughly confused, okay? He doesn't know where the courtyard is. And finally, all the best to him once you cross this road. If you design the habitat like this, you are bound to have an accident. I don't know if you can come out or not. This is a real work of some of the students in the early stage when they were learning the bad design. I picked up the bad design and converted into good design. This is how the good design that is converted. A very good example of a smart habitat design in Charni Chow. They have the roads called de sec That ensures not only safety, but also ensure uh, I will say the society togetherness, and that is what, okay? Uh, this already I've shown it to you. Please allow me. I don't think I can give. This is a real work we have done at, uh, at uh, uh, real work, the safety of work that we have done at uh, Pusa Road. Very interesting uh, citation, very interesting uh, discussions. There is a pillar actually, which is near a Hanuman temple. Those who have seen Hindu six picture, Delhi six picture, there is a Hanuman temple, there is a pillar. This pillar number, actually, if you look at it here, 157. 157, somebody told from Hindu mythology, it become 30 number. Sir, the accidents are happening. We didn't uh, go with the, this uh, 
uh, Hindu, let it be there or let it not be there. But we understood the concept that the that was creating a visibility block. And now if you go to that place, it is converted into a roundabout sort of thing. And that's how the accidents are ensured. I'm sorry, I've taken a little more time. Uh, my apology to, to come back. Uh, I have already uh, displayed my IDs, etc. Should there be any discussions, you can always uh, call me. But the better thing to call back and to uh, contact uh, Igno. Uh, thank you very much for presently listening to me. Yes, I did have a coverage of this and quite possible as uh, like a uh, Indian dish and in the marriage party where you put uh, everything in the dish and finally you don't even know the taste of any of the, the dish, whether it's a sweet or it is anything. So unlike uh, South Indian, they will keep on serving one by one. So I have followed a North Indian method that where you put everything into the disc and finally you tell me what is the taste. Thank you very much for this. Uh, my apology for uh, taking it slightly uh, longer. And as I told you, I did get my computer. I, this stick is already put on the back side of the computer. I could display it here only uh, morning itself. Otherwise, I could have done the editing part. Thank you very much. Yeah, please. Thank you very much, Professor Sevaram, for that extremely exciting talk. In fact, uh, you have provided all the students and the faculty members who are uh, not from this uh, particular subject a broad overview of what uh, all is involved in the process of innovation in this particular topic of smart habitats. And you have also provided us with all new and emerging concepts uh, such as connected vehicles, solar farming, extremely exciting. And I'm sure that our students who are listening and who are aspiring to set out on their journey of entrepreneurship will be highly motivated from your talk. I would like to uh, uh, invite a few uh, comments please. or observations, sir. Uh, I know you are very short of time, but uh, please uh, uh, spare some more time, a little bit more. And uh, I would invite our um, uh, listeners here for their comments, please. Do we have any comments? And uh, also, I'd like to uh, request Dr. Sharma to provide his uh, inputs, please, Dr. Sharma. Thank you. It was really an excellent presentation, covering a variety variety of aspects uh, related to our day to day life. And it's not only the smart habitat or uh, smart cities, but in fact, if you look at um, the the aspects which you have highlighted, we we think I think this should be covered in our day to in our daily ventilation. These are in our ancient times also. But how now these are being integrated with the technology that is very important, and um, you have very, very, uh, uh, we can say like a in a good way that you have highlighted a number of number of innovative ideas for these students in almost all the areas, right from the environmental issues and uh, waste management, uh, traffic flow management, and other things. So if uh, our students go through this uh, presentation. I think once, twice, or thrice, or even more times, every time they'll get new idea for their innovation. This uh, this is a nutshell I can say. Though uh, you had many things, I could see the, the slides when you were browsing. Uh, time was very limited. Uh, certainly, we will expect you sometimes later also uh, for uh, some different on some different topic to discuss about that. And uh, I think uh, these ideas will help our students in uh, taking some other initiatives. They can um, think of finding some solutions of the problems which you have highlighted. Many things you 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 demonstrated with the help of diagrams, examples, and then how they are working, what kind of uh, problems are there, and how you are addressing those. And that is the way of uh, finding solution to the problems presentation thank you thank you very much i think we can invite our um, other members to give their comments or suggestions or feedback or may like to uh, ask some uh, questions also so we can invite our participating members faculty members please yes please uh, do we have any observations or comments please anybody So um, if we do not have any observations or comments, uh, 
we would like to wind up today's session because Professor Saab is, uh, has another meeting, has to go. So, yes, yes, please. So I thank uh, Professor Seva Ramji for that extremely interesting session. And I thank him for spending his valuable time to address our students. Thank you, sir. And thank you, uh, Professor uh, uh, Dr. Mamita, Professor Sharma for uh, speaking nicely. You see, when we take online class, so the problem is that uh, we are doing multiple jobs. Uh, probably there cannot be a better smartness than that. Okay? Either we are handling our family, we are eating, or we are teaching, or we are signing the paper, etc. So finally, uh, you know, when we ask the student, any 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 questions you have? Yes, sir, I have one question. When will you finish this class? Thank you. This is okay. When you finish, so that is a, I, okay. I will finish just now. Thank you, sir. Okay. So that time, sir, we uh, that is the problem. But, that uh, the beauty of these online sessions is that. Uh, even if you finish the class right now, yeah. if you have interest in you, later on think like it was useful, I missed something, you can go through again because these ah. recorded, recorded version of uh, the presentation, we will make it available on our YouTube channel, Facebook yes. Live, and many times we have seen that why students able to attend these uh, live sessions, they go through these sessions again, when, as per their con convenience, and then they put their questions. Ah, that that is, they that want is to know something. That and uh, even if they are not asking question, um, uh, our purpose is basically to make them aware of them, to sensitize them uh, towards these all issues. Um, uh, I did not mention about the National Center for Innovation and Distance Education in yeah. my uh, initial remarks, but uh, this center is basically um, aimed at promoting innovation, entrepreneurship, and startup among the IGNO students and faculty. Yeah, yeah. And for that purpose, you will agree with me. The basic thing is to sensitize them towards the, the problems and aspects and issues where they can do something innovative. So in that context, I think today's yeah. presentation is very, very useful. If they go through again and again, they will find number of ideas uh, for their work. So that yeah. I can say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, that, that's fine. Uh, yes. In fact, um, I have been slightly over ambitious, um, or not over ambitious, then I did not have time to audit it. But I think uh, maybe it could have been that we could have focused on one single topic. But anyway, first is to sensitize, next to do the first is I wanted to do the marketing of Sevaram, okay? And then marketing of the innovations. Then, yes. Uh, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. In fact, we'll be really happy to be associated with you in the yeah, future. Yeah, yeah. We are teachers. We always learn. We always exchange ideas. The good yeah. part that we don't copy it from internet as far as possible. <clears throat> it is either taken from book, journals, or our own work. That is there. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. you. Yeah, and I, I would like to thank all the directors and heads, regional directors, faculty members, and academics of IGNU for attending today's session. I thank all the uh, faculty members of the mentor institutes also. And I thank Mr. Rajesh Sharma, head of the public information unit for providing NCID with a Facebook live platform and ensuring the smooth conduct of the session with utmost dedication. I thank Dr. Upi Sharma, Director NCID, and my colleagues, Dr. Josna Dikshit and Dr. Sujata Santosh for their untiring support. I thank Mr. Pawan Kumar for extending his assistance in the smooth conduct of this program. So this brings us to the end of today's session. Hope to see you next week. Till then, namaste.